and welcome to this week's Money Fit Live webinar. We are talking about the savings roller coaster. Why you should be saving money like you're at a theme park. That may not sound right if you've ever been to a theme park. You might think, well, people don't save money, they spend money at theme parks. We're going to talk about how this all fits together uh, and roller coasters or any kind of popular ride. We're gonna, this is going to be a kind of a self evaluation format here. There's going to be some questions I'll ask. Go ahead and you can write them down. Just keep mental track of them. We'll go through seven or eight different questions uh, here and just get you an idea of, of the discussion. It'll kind of help uh, help direct us to where we want to go in this discussion about money and saving. So first question. Oh, and by the way, any questions you have, please do give us a call. Or do send us an email. If you're watching this live, use our chat box. Glad to do. Uh, glad to respond. First question. What are savings? I mean, they, that seems like straightforward enough question. There's so many different answers you can get, though. Savings and investments, people use that in the same uh, sentence quite often. Savings are short term. Are they stocks? Are they wealth building accounts? What do you think the answer is there if you were to define savings? And as we go through these, if you need more time, just pause the, pause the, uh, the webinar here. The answer is savings are short term. They are not long term, so they are not investments. Investments, those are, uh, that's putting money into a product or a service or a, a, an item that you expect will earn more money for you over time, bring back more than you put into it. That's an investment or a wealth building account. Uh, stocks are a good uh, example of investments. Short-term uh, savings are short-term. They are not meant to build wealth. We get too hung up on, oh, this interest rate is so low that why do I even use it? Because you're going to need it. Savings are not meant for long-term. They are short-term places to park your money that you're going to use later or actually sooner than later. That's what short-term, uh, that's what savings are. So we got to change the way we look at savings. Stop focusing on on how little we're earning. Yes, we're not even earning as much as inflation, but we're putting money into a fund that we can get to quickly if we need to. So that's what savings is. Why should we save? I mentioned to get to it quickly. Well, let's, what are some of those reasons we might need to save? Is it for emergencies? Is it for vacations? Is it for dining out? Retirement? What is it? Obviously, emergencies, but also for vacations. Too often we only think, I'm saving for emergencies. Vacation comes around, oh, well, we'll just use the credit card and then we're in debt. And we're gonna get to this here in a little bit, how that is exactly why we uh, need to be saving like we're getting ready to ride a roller coaster. Savings really is all about putting money aside for something that you won't have enough money from your paycheck to pay for. If, if you have such a huge paycheck that you can go on vacation with your next paycheck and still pay all your regular bills, you may not need to save for vacation. Most people do. Dining out, if you need to save up for dining out, you need to reevaluate where you're eating and, and your um, habits on eating out. Retirement, again, long-term investments. So saving, it's gotta be for emergencies, uh, vacations, other things that we're saving for uh, short-term. That means the next couple of years, next three, five years, uh, maybe uh, appliances and furniture or something you want to do for the house or the yard, uh, it, anything like that. Fixing a car, thats those are short-term things. Okay, so here's the analogy. Imagine you are, uh, last, think about the last time you were at a theme park. If you've never been to a theme park, think about going to a, a fair or something along those lines. And how long do we wait in line for a one minute or two minute ride? Quite often you'll wait for a, an hour and some people will wait for two hours for the most popular rides that last two minutes. We wait for 60 minutes and we only ride for two. Why is that? Think about it this way though, because that's what happens. We go on the ride, we get off, let's go to another and we go do it again. And we talk about how much fun we had. What would happen if you flipped that around? 
if you said, okay, instead of waiting for 60 minutes and riding for two, you can actually go right on the roller coaster, but then you are not allowed to leave the line. You have to get in line and not, you're not allowed to leave for another 60 minutes. We don't do it like that because we would not stand for it. Waiting in line after we do something feels like we're in custody, like we've been arrested, like we are, our, our sense of um, choice has been violated because it's more like punishment. And yet that's exactly what we do when we pay for things using credit cards that we are gonna take months and even years to pay off after we've made the purchase. We buy now, we pay later, and we are stuck in that line, waiting and waiting and waiting, even though we've already had the experience or the items already been used up or broken down or worn out. So next time you think about putting something on a credit card that you cannot afford to pay off in full immediately, remember, are you willing to be stuck in line after you've gone on the rail roller coaster? No, nobody wants to do that. It does not seem right because it goes against our nature. And yet we've been told that we should not worry about it. We can buy now, pay later. That is the opposite of what we should be doing. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let's go back to the uh, self-evaluation. Let's uh, talk about question number three. Savings is what? Savings is an account, an amount, a precaution, or a commitment. What would you say if you were to pick from that list, what would you say savings is? Quite often we think of a savings account. We think of savings as an amount. It's got to be three months. It's got to be six months worth of savings of our, uh, however much we need to live on. Savings is a precaution against emergency. Here's what I want you to think of whenever you hear savings. It is just a commitment. It is none of the... It, these other things can be involved, but first and foremost, savings is a commitment. So memorize that, repeat it to yourself every day. I save because I'm committed to savings. You're going to need an account. Yeah, you're going to need to figure out how much, right? It does help that it's a precaution against emergencies, but bad vacations on emergencies, replacing your bed is not necessarily an emergency. These are things that are gonna have to happen at some point though. And if you don't commit to actually doing it, it's not gonna happen. You'll end up putting things on a credit card and waiting in line for 60 minutes after you've ridden a two, hour, a two minute ride. Okay, question number four. What is the best way to save? It's the best way to save, or is it best to save at the beginning of the month, at the end of the month, automatically, or whatever you have left over. Guaranteed, 80% of this, this country believes that it's they're gonna save whatever they have left over at the end of the month. Guess what? There is never anything left over at the end of the month. The best time to save is, the, or the best way to save is to do it at the beginning of the month and to do it automatically. If you have, if you've ever argued with yourself, I can't save because I have nothing to save, all my money goes to bills, it's because you're in the mentality that I'm only going to save at the end of the month or I'll save whatever's left over. Human nature says you're not going to have anything left over. You're going to spend everything. That's just the way it works. Here is the challenge. Here's your commitment to yourself. Save at the beginning of the month, even if it's $5, even if it's a few, a few dollars. If you have income, if you have income, save something. Put it aside. And at the end of the month, you're not going to feel much different than you did at the beginning of the month or the previous month when you waited to the end of the month. Even if you start saving 50 or 100 or $200 a month, you start realizing, you know what? We've been I've been spending money on things that just are not that re uh, important. Bills are not needs. That's another problem. We start think thinking, I don't have any money to save because all my money is going to bills. So what? Have you looked at your bills lately? Now, some people, if your income is rent and food and clothing, maybe some medical, some educational stuff, that's one thing. But if you're throwing in there your um, anything like 
cable or satellite TV or Hulu or Disney Plus or anything like that, where you're dining out even once a month, you have already decided that that is a priority over saving money. Even though those are not needs, in your mind, you've already decided that's more important to me than saving money. And yet at some point, you're going to need that money for something even more important down the road, whether it's for uh, replacing a refrigerator, fixing a car, something. And you've, so you've, you've already made that decision that dining out is more important uh, than fixing a car so that when I have to fix a car, I'm just going to put it on a credit card, which is going to mean I'm going to end up pay paying 15, 20, 30 percent more for that card over, the, over a few years uh, for that repair because I have to pay for interest. So we've got to we've got to change this. And I'm not talking about you, you watching this webinar. I'm talking to us, us in general, you, the human race. This is just how we think. How much is enough? So how much should you be saving? This question comes up all the time. Is it 5%, 10%? Is it $100 or 15%? Again, I'm going to go back. It's not an amount. It's a commitment. Once you start commit, have committed to saving, you'll start saving. And then you'll realize I can save more. And at the end of the next month, you're like, I, I, I'm not saving enough. And you'll, because you're committed to saving for your future, saving for a, a future needs and wants. You will just automatically start to improve your savings once you've committed to it. But is it 500, 1,000, three months worth of living, six months worth of living? The answer is yes, all of them. If all you can do is, is try and focus on $500, if it's going to take you a year or two years to get to $500, commit to it. Fine. That $500 is your focus right now. Go for it. Once you get there, move down to the $1,000. Then figure out, well, what is it that I need to live on or we need to live on in this household for three months? That includes your housing, utilities. That includes housing utilities. Um, food and some sort of some necessary clothing, not very much, but necessary. And then you get into things like transportation and communication, or cell phones and internet, that sort of thing. So multiply that by three, that's your next goal after a thousand. Once you hit that, do you need six months? If you're only making $15 an hour, you're likely not going to need more than three months worth of savings. Here's, here's the rule of thumb. For every $10,000 a year you earn, you're going to need one month worth of savings. So if you're earning $50,000 a year in your household, you should probably work to have five months worth of emergency savings. If you are earning $100,000, you're going to probably need 10 months worth of savings. Why? Because it... The, the higher the income, the more time you're going to need in between jobs. If you were to lose your job, you're going to need extra time to find another higher paying job. So that's why at lower income levels, we typically don't need as long as much uh, living expenses as, as, as we do at higher income levels. Where should you keep your savings? Should you keep it in a bank or credit union, in a piggy bank, in the stock market, in real estate? Considering that Savings are short term and we need them in case of emergencies or those goals. We need to be able to get to that money fairly quickly. So we want to keep it somewhere accessible. Bank or credit union is where you want to keep the bulk of it. You want to keep some money at home in a box or in a jar or whatever. That's fine. Don't don't keep very much of it, because if you if something were to happen, uh, whether it was in a, a, you know, a flood or a a fire, more likely a fire or a robbery, whatever, even if you have insurance, renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance, they only cover a certain amount of cash. So only keep uh, 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 the amount of cash at home for real emergencies, you know, $500 maybe, but not much more than that. Uh, and don't keep your emergency savings. Do invest in stocks and bonds and long-term stuff. If you can, it can do and consider investing in real estate if that fits your retirement plan. But those, if you need the money, it takes it takes weeks, if not months, to actually get that money out. Or if you can get it out pretty quickly, like stocks, um, and in a retirement 
account, like a 401k, you're going to have, you may have to pay a penalty and pay taxes on top of that. So keep it in a bank or credit union, generally. Okay, let's talk about some practical applications. How are you spending money? If you're trying to keep your savings in a wallet, not a good idea, obviously, or uh, on a card. A lot of I've met a lot of people who leave or um, keep and build their savings accounts on a prepaid savings card or a prepaid debit card. Problem with that is if you lose either, your money's gone. There is no protection. If you have it in the bank or credit union, it's protected up to $250,000 per account. So you have a lot of protection. So don't keep it just in a bank or wallet. As soon as the money comes in, it's another thing. If you keep it in your wallet, human nature, you're going to spend it. So as soon as you get your paycheck, transfer it out. Automatically transfer it. Set up if it what does that mean, automatically transfer? I, that means have it either directly deposited in your savings account, right, from your employer, or if the money comes in your checking account, then set up a bill pay or an automatic transfer that two or three days after your checking, your, your paycheck is, is due to come in, have it automatically transferred to a savings account just for those goals. So your savings goal, get it out of your spending uh, account that's what a checking account is. It's your spending. It's your bill paying. If you leave money in there, you're going to spend it. That's because we, that's the whole purpose of that account. All right, so here's, here's what you can do. You can set up multiple savings accounts. And whether you have them at the same bank or the same credit union, if you have it at the same financial institution, that might be okay. But if you are like me and many other people that if you have savings building in a savings account here and your checking accounts right here and the middle of the month comes and you're you're wanting to go out and have some fun and, and go to out for dinner or go to a movie or whatever and you didn't plan for it, you're just going to start borrowing from your savings accounts. So you might want to consider putting your savings accounts at a, a financial institution separate from your main uh, where you keep your main checking account. But here's some of the um, some of the ideas, where, what uh, sort of savings accounts you might have. You might have, of course, your emergency savings fund. Put it, put a certain amount in there until you get to the point where you have enough to live on in case you lose your job or uh, get injured or out of work for a while, anything along those lines. You can have a gift giving account. If you give gifts at Christmas time or you give gifts at birthdays, that money's got to come from somewhere. Start putting it in every month, a certain amount, so that at birthday time, you will have the cash be able to take care of that without using your uh, plant or credit card. Appliances and furnitures. Furniture, again, every appliance will eventually wear, wear out. We hope they last forever, but refrigerators, washers, dryers, dishwashers, microwaves, the furnace, the water heater, they all, Ameri the uh, um, air conditioner, they all eventually wear out. How much is it going to cost to replace them? Figure out how long they last. Just Google. You can go online, do an internet search, and say, how long, uh, what's the life expectancy of my refrigerator? And you'll find out and figure out how now, figure out how much, how old your refrigerator is, how much time do you have between the, the, the life expectancy and where it's at now. That's how long you have to save. That's how you figure out how much you should be saving. How about for your next uh, vacation or uh, trip? Uh, make sure you're planning for that. Do you have some work you want to do in the yard or in the, uh, in the, in the home? You want to do some painting? You want to do some uh, uh, work on, on some walls or remove some walls or do, put a berm in the, in, in, in the yard? It's up to you. Figure out how much it's going to cost and when you want to do it and start saving for that. Next car repair. Next car or car repair, excuse me. Don't don't pay off your car and then say, yay, I can, we can start spending this money again. That is, that is so, so not what we should be doing. If you uh, don't have a car payment, give yourself a car payment because your car right now is going to eventually need, need to be replaced. No car will last forever. If your car, if you think your car is going to last forever, give me a call. I want to know what brand and uh, make and model it is because if it really will last forever, I want one. Generally, you're going to have to replace that car at some point. Are you preparing for it by saving for it so you don't have to put it on, take out a loan and pay another 10 to 20% on the car above and beyond what the original price was? So these are just some examples. There's other things you can save for, education, 
being among them. Uh, but this gives you an idea of, of where you can start. So you, for each of those things, you can have a separate savings account. If you keep all of those things in one savings account, and let's say it's uh, coming on, uh, uh, summertime is coming on, and you're thinking it's time to go on a, a summer vacation. You've been putting summer vacation plan uh, money in there. You're putting, putting appliance money in there. You've been putting gift giving and emergency. And cr summer comes along. How much of that is for summer vacation or for our, our travel? No, let's just use it all right now, and we'll try and get caught up on these other things later. No, have separate savings accounts so you know exactly how much you have for each of those uh, events. Okay. Now it's hard. Let's let's we'll take this uh, analogy a little bit further. Not all rides are enjoyed by or appropriate for everybody. You go to a uh, uh, a fair or to an amusement park. There's some rides you're going to enjoy that nobody else will, a uh, few other people will enjoy and vice versa. So when you get ready to save, there are, you may not be comfortable uh, with a bunch of different savings accounts, or you may not be comfortable putting money into some uh, commercial bonds or some other sort of short-term five-year, 10-year savings. Find what's comfortable for you, what you enjoy most. Um, this ride is for your own benefit, so make sure that you are comfortable with it. Yes, most people, but not all, do enjoy the longer rides versus the shorter rides. Uh, but even then, most rides just last a couple of minutes. If you can save for long term, yes, you have, you have to be doing that. People ask me, should I save for, for emergencies? Should I invest for the future? Should I pay off my debt? And the answer always is and always will be yes. If you have debt, you may not want to focus equally on all three of those things, but you should be paying down your debt, but you also should be stay committed to savings and stay committed to invest, investing for your retirement. If you don't have debt, maybe you want to split the emergency or the savings and the investments until you get to the point where you have a sufficient in savings, and then you can focus more on investments. But all three, you have to be doing all three. So look at the long term, not just the short term. There's a couple more here. What percentage of Americans have no personal savings? 27, 43, 54, 73. 27% have zero big goose eggs in any kind of account. But if you want to talk about living paycheck to paycheck, was essentially the same thing as no savings, except that you might have a few dollars in an account. $20 or $50, but this is 27% is big goose eggs. Not even either no savings account period or zero balance. But be, depending on the on the um, study you, you look at, anywhere from 60 to 80% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and are not saving at all on a regular basis. So let's just, here's, here's a practical question for you. How much are you gonna have to save every month if your next fridge is gonna cost you $1,500. Let's assume, as you see down there, that fridges usually last about 15 years. Let's say you just got a refrigerator and you're ready to uh, start saving for it, for the next one. Because this refrigerator you have, it's gonna last for about 15 years. So $1,500 at $100 a month, $10 a month? No, it's $100 a year. So that you'll be ready. And $100 a year works out to be $8.33 a month. And then you won't have to stress out about the fridge dying, dying and you not having anything to re, uh, fix it with or replace it with. And then going down and either buying uh, one on a credit card or on store credit at 30% interest or worse, using a payday loan, uh, you'll be ready. You do the same thing with your other refrigerator, your other appliances, washers, dryers, and so forth. Yes, you might be saving fifty dollars a month for all your things, but think about when those things start to break. You're ready. You're set. You're not. You're not worried about. It. You're ready to go, and you're you're not stressing about it. Okay, three key points. Ask yourself these questions: What are you saving for? Where are you saving it? And which uh, which habit are you willing to give up or, or to redirect money from so that it goes toward something more important in your savings? 
three things. Ask yourself those three three things. What do I need to save for? Where am I going to save it? And then do I need to redirect money from some other less important habit or behavior over here to something that I've uh, categorized as priority? That's up to you. And make that commitment. Okay, so if you want to change, here's the theory of change. Here's things you got to do. One, picture your future. Can you imagine yourself saving in the future? What does it look like? How do you feel? Do you have some figures there? Can you imagine something breaking down and you being able to plop down some cash rather than having to put a credit card down? How does that make you feel to be able to do that? And then consider where you're at now. And do you see the difference? Are you content with where, where you want to be and with the difference where you are now? That's that discontent. That's what should motivate you. What are you doing now? What are you doing to improve the chances of success in the future? Tell yourself, I'm going to change. I am going to start. This is the commitment. I'm going to start saving. And then you might even write that down. But ask yourself this one thing. What is one thing I can do right now to make a difference? Do you, and, and I would say, go ahead and pause this. Make a phone call. Run over during lunch to a bank or credit union. Open up a new savings account and name it. Get online. You can, you can actually name it whatever it is, emergencies or a vacation you want to go on, name it. Or get on your phone right now and transfer a certain amount of money over to your savings account, even if it's a dollar or $5, it doesn't really matter. Do one thing right now, one thing within the next hour, or you'll it won't happen. You'll have just wasted our last 30 minutes together. Make that commitment. You will never regret it. If you would like a certificate of completion for this webinar, please uh, go to, down there at the bottom, you see bit.ly slash MF for MoneyFit, MFL, MoneyFit Live, dash save. So bit.ly slash MFL dash save. Put in your name, how you want it to, put, uh, to read on your certificate of completion. You'll need to put in your email address, and then it'll ask you for this passcode. And your passcode is coaster1019. No spaces, no dashes, no caps. C-O-A-S-T-E-R-1019. There's your passcode, and that's how you get your certificate of completion. Thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to, to see this or uh, uh, other webinars that we've done in the past, you can find them on our archive. Go to moneyfit.org slash L-I-V-E live. You'll see uh, in a link to the upcoming webinar. You can also find our uh, uh, archive of past webinars. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.